Time for sports. Lionel Messi has been confirmed as a new Paris Saint-Germain player and gave press conference today in Paris. Messi's two-year contract with an option for a third was signed yesterday after a medical in Paris and he has been handed the number 30 shirt. Lionel Messi is impatient to start work on the task of winning trophies with Paris Saint-Germain as after his shock departure from Barcelona, the 34-year-old signed a two-year deal with the option of a third at the league one club after his 21 year stay at the catalan outfit came to an end he's been speaking at his unveiling today so what's the future like for him i'm joining the studio by <laughs> husband Sandra. Hi, he's been coaching me how to say <laughs> Paris Saint Germain, and he says it's Ligue 1. Pardon me, I'm not a sports presenter. But of course, what are the implications of all of this for uh, La Liga? It's it's a downer, really, for the Spanish La Liga. You know, um, for a long time, Messi has been the star attraction for the La Liga. And already, you are hearing people talk about the need for broadcasters to gravitate more towards the French Liga because Messi has moved in there. Lionel Messi is an entire institution, he's a whole institution, really. Um, and so um, it's not surprising that when he moves, uh, the, the, the La Liga is going to feel the full force of it. And um, we are going to be seeing already, if you monitor social, the social media space here in Ghana, people are beginning to ask which broadcasters are going to be showing the, the, the French Liga. People want to see the action, people want to see Lionel Messi in action. Um, we also understand that, you know, even for Barcelona as a club, it's going to be very difficult for them to sell their tickets because of Messi's departure. So, um, as a league, the Spanish La Liga is going to take a massive hit. There were speculations when news broke that Messi was departing that it was probably a ploy, you know, just to get La Liga to reconsider their financial fair play rules and have a, a special sort of regime for Lionel Messi um, to enable him to stay. But of course, that hasn't happened. It just tells you the magnitude of his impact, the, what he represented for the Spanish La Liga. Mm. Um, if you also look at when Ronaldo was in the La Liga, the La Liga was sold as a rivalry between Messi and Ronaldo. Okay. And then Ronaldo left. So mm. it was just Messi running the show for the La Liga. Now there is no line on Messi. What becomes a selling point? for the Spanish La Liga, and that, mm. that really is a question for them. It, it is indeed a question for them, but of course, this should be a plus for the PSG. Absolutely, mm. absolutely, and not just the PSG. But but of course, given the fact that he spends most of his time with Barcelona, yeah. um, do you think he will fit into the PSG setting? The thing about Messi is that he doesn't need other players to play for him. You know, by himself, he can make things happen. Uh, the quality is there, and has been there for a long time for all to see, and so... We are not looking at a player who is heavily dependent on other players. Um, he can take on quite a number of players, take out a number of players and set up teammates to score. It's actually the other way around where other players are going to be benefiting from his presence on the field of play. I'm talking both teammates and opponents alike because for opponents, you are going to have to up your game. You are going to see a lot of defensive improvement on the part of opponent. His teammates are also going to have to improve significantly to, to be on the same level to be able to play you know, with him. So it's not just for Messi himself, for opponents and for the French Liga itself. It's mm. a massive gain for them. We are going to see a lot of broadcasters, you know, trying to get it right for the French Liga, something that hasn't happened, you know, in the last few years. Definitely, Messi's move has been the talk of town. Absolutely. Everybody has been um, talking about what that will mean. But let's look at the bigger picture of world football. What does this mean? Again, you know, it's, it's a move that has... Uh, shaking the four corners of world football. Mm. Look, he's moved from Spain to France, but there are implications for all the major leagues. And herein I'm talking about the UEFA Champions League. We're looking at the Barca team that was struggling to match the quality that he had in the last eight, ten years. At PSG, he's surrounded by quality. You know, he's got Neymar, he's got Mbappe, he's got Marco Verratti, Sergio Ramos has transferred there. And so for the UEFA Champions League itself, um, the teams in England, the teams in Germany, the teams in Italy, the teams in Holland, in Portugal are all going to struggle, really, against PSG. We are looking at a French team that can realistically win the UEFA Champions League, go on to win the Club World Cup and the 
UEFA Super Cup and all. And so globally, the dynamics also changes somewhat. Mm. You know, um, it's, it's just a case of a powerhouse which has sneezed. The rest of world football is catching a cold. The rest of world football is catching a cold, definitely. But so uh, let's look at the uh, so look at the picture on your screen. What's the story behind <laughs> that picture? Rivals who have become teammates: Sergio Ramos of Real Madrid <laughs> and Lionel Messi of Barcelona. Now it's um, Lionel Messi of PSG and Sergio Ramos of PSG. The <laughs> two players absolutely hated each other on the field of play. Good Ramos enough. was probably one of the defenders who would go in really hard on Lionel Messi. Look, some of the tackles were dirty. Some of the plays were very, very dirty, very physical. Um, there is a video in a game where Ramos actually stepped on the, on the hand of Lionel Messi. Hmm. He's kicked him in the knees, kicked him everywhere. Today, they find themselves to be team. And I think that these two players are professionals and both find a way to work together. You're looking at a top defender and um, the best of the best you know, in terms of attacking football in the world. So, Barca 10, PSG 30, what's the connection? I, 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 well, so, Neymar, Neymar, Neymar already has the, the number 10 jersey for PSG, and so um, Messi is not going to get that. The number 30 jersey is what Messi started with at Barcelona. And so, okay. if there was any other jersey number that he was going to be picking, it was going to be the number 30 jersey. So, that is not too surprising for me in that sense, but... Mm. Um, in the coming years, players have that understanding where they look. The, the Jesse numbers represent just more than the shirts. Sometimes mm -hmm. also a brand okay. as well. You have Cristiano Ronaldo customizing um, his name, CR7. The Jesse number seven is part of his brand. Mm. CR7 has become a global brand. Okay. LM10, Lionel Messi 10, is also somewhat a brand. Um, I don't know what sort of consultations will go on from this moment or between Neymar and PSG and then Messi as well. Mm. But at some point, you do expect that Messi is going to be wearing the number 10 jersey at Paris Saint-Germain. Oh, wow. So, but the man of the moment, uh, Lionel Messi, has been going for some medicals at the PSG headquarters. Um, watch this. That was Lionel Messi there, Hans. My producer says I should ask you if Kotoko has this facility. <laughs> I'm sure they will. Probably have to go to Amin Scientific Airport <laughs> to be able to carry out such a medical. That, that's on the But list. interestingly, PSG has spent millions of cities yeah. to be on the uh, UEFA Champions League. Uh, but of course, uh, Lionel Messi, is he the final uh, you know, piece? In that in that, yes. It's, it's, it's difficult to say he's not. When you sign Lionel Messi, everything suddenly becomes possible. Mm. You know? um, and... and, and what lays credence to that fact is, is in the number of trophies that, and, and I'm talking, you know, team trophies and individual trophies that he's won. Wherever he's gone, well, he's only been at Barcelona, but during his time there, it's rained trophies, okay. you know. Um, so it's difficult really to sit here and say that, well, PSG are not favourites for this season's UEFA Champions League. They are certainly going in there as favourites. Of course, we know that the Champions League is not really about which players you do have, sometimes more about the commitment of the players and which manager is also in charge. But the signing, Messi to PSG, put PSG in that top position in terms of the favourite for, for mm. the UEFA champion. Mm. Let's talk about the fans of Lionel Messi. Is it automatic transfer from them, Barca to yeah, PSG? There, there are two types of football fans. There are those who follow players and there are those who are fans of, of the club. Okay. A lot of people you know, supported Barca because of Lionel Messi. Quite a number of people. Okay. You'd expect that those supporters are going to gravitate towards PSG now that he's moved. Um, there are also those who are loyal simply to the club, but they will still be watching what Messi will be doing. Look, it's difficult to separate Messi from Barcelona. Mm. Um, he's their most successful player. He's been part of the most successful era of FC Barcelona. And mm. so, really difficult to separate the two entities. Mm. You are going to get a lot of Barca fans supporting PSG. Of course, they will be supporting their Barcelona, but when Messi is in action, they will still be supporting like Messi. But <laughs> All the best. what happens when PSG comes up against Barcelona? That will be that's, something that's that we'll be looking forward to. I'll say all the best to Lionel Messi. That will be it for sports.